Hey everyone, Mr. Gay here, and uh, sorry for the audio quality, I do not have my headphones with me today, so I assume it's a little echoey, but hopefully the audio is good enough for you to listen in. Um, this video we're going to talk about altitudes, and more specifically, um, how we can create the equations of lines of altitudes on our coordinate plane. So beginning what an altitude is, um, in general it is a line segment that connects the vertex of one side of a triangle to the opposite side of it, and in particular here, as mentioned, that opposite side, it would be perpendicular to it. So you can see at the diagram on the right, we have the triangle and we have all three of its altitudes drawn. So you can see, I'll just talk about the green one. Um, it goes through the vertex, which is here at the top, and it goes to the opposite side, which is across or not touching the vertex here in green. And in particular, the actual altitude itself, which is this dotted line that I'm gonna draw, makes a 90 degree angle with the opposite side, also known as being a perpendicular um, segment here. Another name for the altitude that you've probably heard over the years is that it's considered the height of the triangle. And the reason why that's brought up is I have the area of a triangle listed below. This lesson is not really gonna talk much about area, but I do wanna point out that whenever you find the area of a triangle, that the height and your base must be perpendicular. So this is going to be important to know because if you do need to find the area, um, what we can do is if you know the length of your opposite side and you know the length of your altitude, like this green triangle we have here, we can actually find the area of that. Um, in addition to that, we can also find the area if we wanted to use this blue side as our opposite side instead and this altitude. So if we knew those two lengths, then we can find the area of the triangle. So just an important little fact that we would want to know about altitudes. Now, where altitudes are located sometimes does depend on the triangle. Um, in a right triangle, I'm going to draw one of these in in particular here. Right here, this opposite side AB, okay, and I have vertex C. And so the idea of an altitude is we are connecting the opposite vertex to the, sorry, the vertex to its opposite side and thus making that a perpendicular or 90 degree angle. So this dotted line that I'm drawing in here, this is the altitude, and it's connecting to make a 90 degree angle. Well, in a right triangle, that's actually going to end up actually being one of the sides itself. Whereas if I go to our other shapes here, like this uh, acute triangle, here's our opposite side, which we'll call DF for this lesson, the vertex E. And if I connect E to DF at a 90 degree angle, it does create a right angle. And notice this time it's inside of the triangle versus in an obtuse triangle we're going to use opposite side xz for this demonstration opposite vertex of that is y but the problem is when i go to connect this to make a 90 degree angle we're actually going to end up going outside the triangle so i would need to extend my opposite side a little bit and that's going to be my altitude in this situation so depending on the type of triangle will actually depend the location of where that altitude is, but nonetheless, that height is still going to be there. So the easiest one is an acute. All vertices, it will always be, the altitude will always be located inside the triangle. Now, in a right triangle, in two of the three situations, it's going to look like what I have in my demonstration up there. So if the vertex is an acute angle, meaning if we're trying to connect C or A in those situations to B in either of those cases to their opposite side, it's going to just be on the triangle itself. It's going to actually be the side of the triangle. But if I were to do the vertex of the right angle itself, so connecting the right angle, and I'll erase this and do this in a different color to demonstrate this situation. If I go, let's go to a green pen here. So let's use this pen instead. Uh, if I go this one, let's say I want to connect point B to side length AC and I want to make a 90 degree angle this time. Notice this time it's still going to be inside the triangle. So just something to look for there, that in this situation it would still be inside the triangle. And that same argument is going to apply for our obtuse triangle. So if I erase the red here, let's go back and let's see if we want to, so let's first write vertex is acute. So like the example we did, it would be outside the triangle, but in the situation that the vertex, in this case, is going to be our obtuse angle, watch what ends up happening here. So we'll take that green pen out. Opposite vertex is Z, 
we're connecting with x, y, and notice this time it's once again going to be inside the triangle. So just something to look for there. Um, and this is just a good way for you to check that, make sure you've done the construction properly. So before we get to the coordinate plane itself, let's go ahead and just draw just some sketches here um, so that we have an idea of what it would look like. So go ahead and try examples one, two, and three. Um, I want them to go specifically through the vertex I have listed. Try that out and we'll look at it in just a second. Okay, so if we're going through vertex C, we would start here and we'd want to connect with its opposite side, which in this case is AB. So the altitude would look like that dotted line that you have right there. So good call there. On uh, the second one, we also want to go through vertex C. So here it's vertex C. The opposite side of vertex C is AB. Connecting those, once again, there's going to be what your altitude is going to look like. And then the last example, we want to go through vertex B. So B is here. Opposite side this time is AC. But in this situation, I'm going to have to extend this because in order to make B connect with the opposite side at a 90 degree angle, it would have to occur outside of the triangle. So these sketches are going to be important because ultimately what this will help us with is when we're creating the equations in just a few moments, you're going to see the two most important characteristics we need um, can be found just by looking at a sketch. And last little thought here, it says, how could you find the area of these triangles? We're not, again, not going to talk about area of a triangle in this lesson, but I'd just like to bring it up since it, altitude is an important fact here. So here's what I want you to know, okay? If you could, if we wanted to use the distance formula, we could find the length of the altitude from the vertex to, and it doesn't finish there, opposite side. So if we found the dotted line length, we would be able to get the height of the triangle, and then we would be able to find the length of the opposite side, and that would be my base. So we could use the distance formula. That's ultimately the formula that we would be able to use here. So let's write that in. We could use the distance formula, and that would take care of things. So let's take a look at um, constructing altitudes on the coordinate plane. So just as we're following through the definition, we want to choose the vertex point that our altitude will go through. We want to find the slope of the opposite side of that chosen vertex. We want to determine the perpendicular slope then of that opposite side. And lastly, we will put it all together and write an equation. So let's use those steps and let's go ahead and do example one in that fashion. So we want to create an altitude which goes through point C. So there's point C, there's side AB, the opposite side. And we want to essentially find the equation of that dotted line that I am now putting through the equation on here. So step one is to identify the vertex. In this case, it is going to be point C, and point C is 6, negative 4. Step two. We want to find the slope of the opposite side. So in this case, we're going to find the slope of segment AB. We're going to use our slope formula. So Y2 minus Y1, notice I wrote plus because of the negative, and then uh, X2, which is negative 2, minus um, X1, which in this case will be another plus. So I'm going to get 8 over 4, which means the slope of that red segment I have is 2. However, we don't want that because step number three is determine the perpendicular slope. So we'll still step three. Perpendicular slope, in this case, is actually going to be equal to negative one half. Now, for step four, what we're going to do is create the equation of the line. We know it goes through the point six comma negative four, and because we found the perpendicular slope, we now know what the rise and run of this is going to be. So our final step number four is to create the equation. I'm going to use point slope form. So this is, again, the general form of what point slope form is going to look like. So when I set this up, it'll be y plus 4, remember it's minus negative 4, equals negative 1 half, and then it's x minus 6. So this right here is going to be the equation of that dotted red line. So if I wanted to plot this or check this out, we could go on Desmos or check anything out that we wanted to from there. And if you wanted to see it in uh, slope-intercept form, just for record, and this is a good way to validate if an answer is correct, I'll distribute and subtract. So it's negative 1 half x minus 1. And that's kind of good to check because if you actually look at the sketch, it actually is having going through a y-intercept there of negative 1. So that's a good sign that we ended up getting the correct answer 
you of course could plot this on Desmos as well as another validation for that. Let's do one more and then I'll have you try the final example for this video. So here is another triangle. We're going to find the equation which goes through point B. So there's point B. We saw this one earlier. We did this on the sketching section. So we're going to connect that with this side here. And because this is an obtuse triangle, we need to remind ourselves that that dotted line will occur outside of the triangle. But nonetheless, this is still going to be the altitude I want to find the equation of. Step one, we're going to identify point B here, 6 comma 6, as a point that goes through the altitude. Step two, I want to find the slope, in this case, of segment AC. So to do that, we'll once again use our slope formula, y2 minus y1, and it's another negative, uh, x2, which is 6, minus another negative, so plus 1. So we're going to get a slope of 3 sevenths. And then remember that our third step, to find the perpendicular slope, which is ultimately the slope of the altitude, it will be the opposite reciprocal of what we just found. So the point we found here is the point that the altitude goes through. This is the slope that the altitude goes through. And so putting those two puzzle pieces together, Using point slope form, we would get y minus 6 equals negative 7 thirds parentheses x minus 6. And of course, if you wanted, we could multiply this out and find out what the equation it is in slope intercept form. Um, I'll leave that to you as an exercise on your own if you feel like that is necessary. This brings us to the last example in the video, which is example number 3. Uh, same drawing as we did in example 1, but this time I want you to create an altitude which goes through point A. So go ahead and pause this video at this point and try this problem out and I will have the steps and work here when you are finished. Welcome back. Here are our steps. So starting in step one, we identified the point, the vertex that we're trying to go through, which in this case is negative six comma negative four. The slope of the opposite side, in this case BC, will be this formula here. And when I simplify it, I got a slope of negative one. So the slope of the solid red line is negative 1. That means the perpendicular slope, the altitude that we're actually trying to find, would be positive 1. That's the opposite reciprocal of that. Taking number 1 and number 3 and merging it together to create an equation, we get this equation here in point slope form, which again, if you want to validate that this is correct, we can look at this in slope intercept form. So if I do that, we would end up with x plus 2, y equals x plus 2. And if we actually look at the drawing, we see that it actually has a y-intercept of 2, and look at the slope, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I'm feeling pretty confident that this would be the altitude in our problem. So boiling it down, remember these four steps as we're trying to create the equation of our altitude. I hope this video has been helpful for you in helping you understand what an altitude is, how to sketch one, and lastly, how to find the equation of one on the coordinate plane. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day.